In January 2011, the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention announced that there's now 79 million Americans who have prediabetes, and that's up from 55 million Americans just a few years earlier. So the issue of diabetes and getting complications of diabetes affects about one in three Americans already. So it's a subject we need to know something about. So in the world of prediabetes, not everybody's at risk, but obviously a lot of people are. So how do you know if you're one of those people? Certainly if, uh, if you're overweight, above the age of 40, if you come from a family that has diabetes, uh, if you're um, Asian American, as a woman, if you had diabetes of pregnancy, that's significant. So if you have any of those risk factors, or if you have high blood pressure or high cholesterol, be sure that you know what your blood sugar is. Uh, ideally, your blood pressure and even your blood cholesterol and triglycerides. These are very easy, very routine tests. If your fasting blood sugar is 126 or above, you may have diabetes already. But if it's in between, let's say between 100 and 125, that's what would usually be called pre-diabetes. Now, you don't feel anything, but you're at much at risk for complications of diabetes as, as people who have full-blown diabetes. So, so you need to know. You and your doctor need to have that, that conversation. Are you pre-diabetic or not? If you know that you have pre-diabetes, well, you want to not become diabetic, so you're going to be as lean and mean as you can be. Uh, and you know, pay more attention to things that otherwise you might have let go. At the very least, you want to be sure that you're not smoking and that you have control of your blood pressure and control of your cholesterol. Because the whole point in prediabetes is number one, don't become diabetic, but number two, never get the complications. All the complications, the, the long list of horribles that some of you may know with diabetes, heart disease and stroke and kidney, eye disease, foot disease, all of these problems are quite preventable and they're easily preventable if you catch them early on. Now if you do progress and you go on to diabetes, so now we're talking about people caught early on and caught with the adult form of diabetes, a kind that may not require insulin. The good news is that in 2011 going to 2012, it's so much easier to take care of yourself. The medicines work better, the medicines don't cause side effects the way older medicines uh, did. And by and large, if you're caught early, it doesn't take much to keep things under control. The issue, however, is that there's no one magic bullet. So you need to use medications in combination to control diabetes. But fortunately, medicines can be chosen that don't give you low blood sugars, don't make you gain weight, don't require very much monitoring, can be taken once a day, and are getting less expensive all the time. There's about a dozen things that have to go wrong, frankly, to, to have diabetes. So expect that two, three, or even more things may be needed in combination to get you to be healthy. The future for people with type 2 diabetes looks much better. So even though there's more of it, and frankly, there's more of it at a younger age, um, people are living much better lives with diabetes than they ever did. So be sure you know your numbers, and if you have prediabetes or diabetes, time to pay a visit to your health care provider.